<laughs> this is why I was thinking about it. Oh, Nero, sorry. Hands up if you used to meet in Nero's. Yeah, those of us. Utterly terrifying. Used to have to buy a coffee for a stranger and talk to them. <gasps> hideous no I'm just kidding we had some amazing encounters <laughs> really exciting things there but there were probably maybe 10 of us I would say at that point uh, 10 12 um, and we started meeting there and doing that and we had this vision for this church and we were thinking about how it would happen uh, we quickly started meeting at your courthouse on a Thursday night once every three or four weeks a bit of praise and worship and celebration together hands up if you came to your courthouse yeah, not that many of us, but a few more joining. Brilliant. Then we moved to the wonderful Senzo. We, in case you hadn't guessed, we're really good at coffee shops in this church. We do coffee shops well. We went to Senzo. We had praise and worship and celebration together. Um, we had kids work and the soft play. That was a fun task. Um, and we started to meet more regularly. Um, we had AJ, who was the head of Senzo, was a better evangelist than all of us put together. He invited all of his friends to the Christmas Carol concert. <laughs> which really put us to shame. Um, we had some amazing events there. And then, of course, lockdown happened. So, hands up if you joined us in lockdown and came online. Amazing, like huge growth, actually, all over lockdown. And Duncan and Lawn did such an amazing job of making us still feel part of a church when we were all so isolated. And we had life groups online, we had church online. And it was really exciting. Um, then we had Car Park Church. I nearly forgot Car Park Church. Hands up if you came to Car Park Church. I'm going to guess half of you at least had a dog, because there was a lot of dogs at Car Park Church. And we used to walk around Horton Country Park. We'd listen to the service in our cars. And then we'd go off for a lovely walk. And then here we are today in Blenheim, but also with the blessing of an amazing building from West York Evangelical Church. All of that in five years, guys. Let's have a clap. Woo! So we want to celebrate that, and also not only do we want to celebrate that, but we want to look forward to the next five years, because if God's done all that in the last five years, just think about the next five, or don't, because it might exhaust you. But anyway, that's what we're going to do. So come along, get the date in your diary. I know Mike is super on it with Church Suite. If you sign up, you sign up to bring something so we don't get 200 sausage rolls, and we get a nice mix of food. And also, I was thinking about this last night and thinking, what a great chance to invite our friends to understand what we do at this church, to see where we've come from, to see where we're going. You know, it's such a great opportunity. So bring people along as well. Okay, brilliant. Next slide, please. I'm nearly finished. Sorry, this is very long this morning. We have got some other stuff coming up, including baptisms. Woo! Okay, a bit more uh, interactive again. Sorry. Can you turn to the person next to you, just the person next to you, and tell them, have you been baptized? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, I want you to give them three words that describe that baptism. And I'm coming to pick on some of you in one minute, okay? Okay, I'm coming over this way. This lovely line here. Hands up if you've been baptised. Hey, I've got to pick on Emma. It's her birthday. Woo, the other day. Yes, today? Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> Emma, three words to describe when you got baptised. Sorry? Three words to describe your baptism experience. That was the question. Wet, wet, wet. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Let's see if we can perhaps uh, get a slightly different answer over this side. <laughs> I saw you guys talking lots. Can I pick on you? Who was baptised? Gordon, three words. Well, yeah, um, oh, in the sea. In the sea? Oh, amazing. A sea baptism. How exciting. Well, if that hasn't got you excited... <laughs> um, I, I think baptism is just such an amazing chance to show everybody and declare publicly what Jesus means to you in your life. I got baptised at 21, having become a Christian when I went to university, didn't grow up in a Christian home. And I remember just looking out as I 
gave my sort of testimony, uh, all these friends and family, he probably really didn't quite understand, like, well, why is she doing this? And this is a bit of an odd thing to go to university and suddenly do. And I think the thing for me was, um, it was like a no turning back point. I was like, I have decided I'm going to follow Jesus and I'm not going back. And I remember standing up and saying that and feeling this immense sense of grounding. Like, yes, I'm, I'm grounded in God now. I'm here and I'm going to show everybody and show the world. So if you were one of the people just then that said no to being baptised, can I encourage you, get baptised. Get baptised. It's on, oh, it's gone, look. <laughs> um, it's on Sunday, the 2nd of July. Um, and it's going to be at our new church centre. We've got a baptismal pool there. Duncan's going to be doing it. We will get dunked by dunk trending on, on Twitter if we can. Um, it would be an amazing experience. And if you want to talk to somebody, <laughs> if you want to talk to somebody about baptism and what that involves, Come and see Duncan and Lorna at the end of the service. Okay, right, finally, youth. Uh, well, too many socials to even talk about. The one you need to know about is the Nerf War. Woo, if you've got a boy, you'll have been shot by a Nerf gun plenty of times. I got sniped out the window when I was hanging the washing out the other day. Uh, 14th of May, 6.30 p.m. So go along to the Nerf War. And I think, is that it? Are we done? Yes, I think that's it. Okay, brilliant. Thanks for bearing with me and participating. I'd like all of the worship team to come up and I'm just going to pray for us as we start our service. Father, thank you for an amazing five years. Thank you for everything you've done in the life of this church. And thank you that you've brought everybody here today and everybody who's part of our church here for a reason. You have a purpose for us. You have something that we are going to do here in Epsom to transform um, our town for you. Father, I pray as we're here today, you would bring that knowledge and that understanding and that spirit of yours straight to us here directly through our worship and through the teaching and that we would know that we are loved by you and know that we have purpose in our lives because of you. Amen.
There we go. Amen. Thank you. Ah, how lovely. If you are um, primary age or below, if you can grab a parent and follow, who's going out that way? Laura. Laura's waving at the back. If you can follow Laura, get your parent to sign you in into Kids Church. That would be amazing. If you are secondary age or um, secondary age or secondary and sixth form, if you can follow Georgie, who's waving again, you don't need a parent to sign you in. If you are left in the room, you're as close as we get to an adult. Uh, if you can turn around and say hello to somebody you don't know, that would be amazing. If you know everyone around you, well done. Uh, and we'll be back here in about two minutes. If you're on the live stream, you've got just enough time to put the kettle on. Is it on? Is it on? Am I on? There we go. One, two, three. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Um, I, I realised I didn't say, because most of you know me, but some of you might not. Is that all right? Shall I, shall I stay still? Cool. Um, my name's Duncan. For those of you who don't know me, I have the absolute privilege, along with my wife, Lorna, who spoke earlier and is still chatting, uh, of leading Epsom Vineyard Church. Yeah, would well, you... Uh, no, you didn't actually, did you? No. I'm just so... Yeah. No, no. <laughs> for, the, for the tape, for the recording. There you go, for the tape. How old am I? Um, <laughs> um, if you've got the slides, thank you very much. <sighs> We're in the middle of a series of, on a, um, from the book of Acts, which follows nicely on from the death, of Red, and death and resurrection of Jesus, which we had at Easter. Ultimately, the, the story of Acts, it's got a lot in it, but it's the story of how the first churches, first Christian churches started. Um, uh, we're in Acts 5. I'm following on from Lorna, who, I don't know when we did that, talked about healing. So you've got, uh, in Acts 12 to 16, you've got um, stories about healings, signs and wonders, and deliverances from impure spirits. I'm also, in case you hadn't, if you were here last week, following on from last week, where we heard our own stories about healings, deliverances, and signs and wonders. Just saying. Um, and how the kingdom of God is literally amongst us. If you missed it, honestly, it's on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Go back and watch it. It was stories just from members of our congregation. Um, and it was 
great. So I'm deliberately tying in all that stuff this morning because those stories are basically, A, basically the same stuff that happened in Acts, and B, they're at the heart of Jesus' message. So <laughs> when the stories that Jesus was involved in start to look like the stories that we are involved in, life, our lives start to look a lot more fun. And ultimately, our church, you lot, starts to look more like the church that Jesus envisioned. More about that later. Um, I'm going to do a little, we've got quite a long section from Acts, but I'm, so I'm just going to do a little snapshot of it, reading some of it, if that's all right. Thank you. Uh, okay, starting from chapter, ver, sorry, chapter 5, verse 17. The high priest and the other Sadducees who were with him became jealous. They arrested the apostles and put them in the city jail. But that night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and led the apostles out. The angel said, go to the temple and tell the people everything about this new life. So they went into the temple before sunrise and started teaching, nice and early. Okay, I'm just going to abbreviate this next section. Um, the high priests then asked for the apostles to be brought um, from the jail, but the apostles weren't in the jail. When they found them, they were found teaching again at the temple. So the, high, the temple police brought the apostles back before the high priest for another telling off. This is how Peter and uh, the apostles replied to their telling off. He said this, We don't obey people, we obey God. It's like, don't tell me off. <laughs> you killed Jesus by nailing him to a cross, but the God of our ancestors... Uh, sorry, the God that our ancestors worshipped raised him to life and made him our leader and saviour. Then God gave him a place at the right hand, so that the people at his right hand, so that the people of Israel would turn back to him and be forgiven. We are here to tell you about this, and so is the Holy Spirit, just in case you don't believe us, who is God's gift to everyone who obeys. So the council members appreciated the correction, sent the apostles away with gifts of flowers. They hugged and lived happily ever after. <laughs> it's not quite what happened. Um, the high priest and his buddies get really angry and want to kill the apostles. Just pause there. Imagine what would have happened if they'd have got their way at this moment. Jesus had already been killed. What, what, if, literally, if all the apostles had been killed at this moment, would, would we still be sat here? Who knows? We don't need to know, because fortunately, the Pharisee, Gamaliel, stood up, and he calms some situation down, and he gives them a little bit of a history lesson. He says, uh, um, he reminds them that, that people before Jesus have said they are something, but come to nothing. Uh, <clears throat> so this is his advice. He says, leave them alone. If what they're planning is something of their own doing, it will fail. If God is behind this, you can't stop it anyway, unless you want to fight against God. Bring it on. The council were reasonably happy with this wisdom, so they had them beaten and whipped and told them not to uh, speak about the name of Jesus again. <laughs> it's nearly the same as the advice he gave, nearly. Um, they let them go. Um, the apostles left the council and were very happy because uh, God had considered them worthy to suffer for the sake of Jesus. Every day they spent time in the temple and in one home after another. They never stopped teaching and telling the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Okay, let's just set the scene for us. Imagine this morning, we're not at Blenheim High School. We're at maybe St. Paul's Cathedral or maybe on the steps of Westminster Abbey where the coronation took place yesterday. Theoretically, the temple in Jerusalem was meant for the same thing that the cathedral or the abbey in London is meant for. It's meant so that everybody can worship and be taught the ways of God. But I can guarantee you that if we went there today and started doing what we've just done on the steps of St. Paul's or in the, you know, the nice garden outside Westminster Abbey, we'd probably have someone ask us to leave. <laughs> Maybe we wouldn't get whipped and flogged, but uh, I'm not sure the people in those places would appreciate us doing that. Don't forget, the chapter before this, Peter and John have already been imprisoned once, and they got released without essentially any punishment. So they, they're getting a little bit more confident. If we go back a little bit further, if you remember uh, those of you who are at our Good Friday service, the apostles at that point were really worried. They've just seen Jesus carted off. Ultimately, Jesus gets killed, 
they're going, we're next. But at this point, they haven't been killed. And actually, last time this happened, they were just released like, just behave, stop teaching that Jesus stuff. So this time they get beaten, whipped, um, but they're still continuing to teach the message of Jesus. In this morning's talk, if you remember one word, please remember the word confidence. Up there at the top. Before I go back into this section of scripture, I just want to say two extra stories from last week. The first, um, they both came on email. The first is from the lovely Josie. Uh, I'm reading this more or less word for word. This is, actually, I'm going to read it, then I'll explain. Josie wrote to me. She said, I came to church last week feeling unusually heavy and dull, like I was in a clay-like mud. I appreciated the stories were just from local members of our church about ordinary things. I resonated with the person that needed a top-up of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit and told God that I needed that and would appreciate it if he would top me up too. I felt absolutely nothing. But when I got home, I found out that he had topped me up. And I was back to my enthusiastic self. And then I remembered that when I first received the Holy Spirit, which brought me into a whole new realm of discipleship, it took me more than 10 days to realize what had happened. I'd been expecting a feeling of warm oil or speaking in tongues, but... She shared that just because she felt it could be helpful for someone else today who might have also felt like that last week. Sometimes the Holy Spirit does stuff in us and we don't feel it. Some of you, I was pointing this out last, last week in the ministry time at the end of the service, you could see, visibly see that the Holy Spirit was on some people. It doesn't always work like that though. So I hope that helps. That was story number one back from Josie. Um, <clears throat> Please never underestimate the power of sharing stories. The people that shared last week helped Josie out in this week. Ultimately, let's face it, most of the book of Acts is people, disciples, sharing stories. The second email I had was from Claire, who sent her apologies and her love. Um, This is what she said. That was a brilliant morning this morning. God is really doing some powerful stuff. I've been thinking about what God wants to do in my life, after I, and I have such a passion for healing. So after Pat shared about healing, I felt God say to me, we must look in, I must look into healing on the streets and how we can make that happen in Epsom. If you don't know what that is, come and ask me afterwards, because uh, it'll make the sermon really long. Uh, <clears throat> Nick mentioned it to me a few weeks ago, and I really have a passion to bring people to Jesus through healing on the streets. That's what Jesus did after all. Do you think it's something we might be able to do at Epsom Vineyard? And if so, I'd be happy to lead. Claire's a doctor, a GP. I was like, yes. <laughs> yes, Lord. If, you, if we want to pray for people outside of this building and expect for them to be healed by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, and if you've got a doctor there to say that is healed or that isn't healed, that's quite a nice, um, quite a nice moment. If you've not been to one of our services before, we have points to ponder. This is our first opportunity just to ponder for a moment. I'm going to ask you a question, and if you can turn to the person next to you and just kind of share any thoughts you've got. Um, Actually, let me explain a bit more. First question. If you were here last week, was there any of the stories, ideally one of the stories, that increased your confidence in God? Like with Claire, she felt (coughs) stirred. One of the stories made a difference. Like with Josie, one of the stories made a difference. If you weren't here last week, uh, or you didn't watch it on the live stream, if you can chat to someone who was here last week, that might make it work. Um, In fact, to make it even easier, if you were here last week, can you just pop up a hand for about 10 seconds? If you weren't here last week, look for someone with a hand up. Um, Okay, we've got about two minutes. Turn to that person, and if you can, if you were here last week, if you can answer that question, that would be helpful. Thank you.
about 30 more seconds, 30 more seconds. Cool, if you can wrap those conversations up, that'd be great. So ultimately, what we're seeing in this passage is a clash of cultures, a clash, ultimately a clash of religious cultures, but a clash, a clash beyond that to a spiritual clash. Ultimately, the disciples were only doing what they'd seen Jesus do. <clears throat> if you remember from Good Friday, I said um, Jesus would teach, and then he would perform some miracles, and then something would kick off. Ultimately, a Good Friday, the kicking off was Jesus got nailed on a cross. Um, I use the word kick off as a very generic term at this point. And the disciples are doing exactly that. They, um, actually, they, they've seen the miracle, they pray for a miracle, uh, they're teaching about the miracle, and then they've been in prison for it. It kicks off. Uh, when Lorna and I were training to plant Epsom Vineyard, we had to go through a whole load of theology modules. Uh, Rick Williams, who some of you guys know, some of you guys have been your senior pastor, uh, from, used to be at Riverside Vineyard. He taught us a module on the mission and the culture of the church, the mission and the culture of the church. He used these words to explain this, um, what happens in this scenario. He said... The church's culture should be one of proclaiming the good news of Jesus alongside demonstrating the kingdom of God, ultimately the power of the kingdom of God. Both of those should be intrinsic to us as our church culture. I can do this. Church culture to allow us to continue the mission of Jesus. And when we use the word kingdom of God, phrase kingdom of God, some of you might be going, what does that mean? I've seen the film, but what does it mean? Um, ultimately, Jesus is what Jesus taught, demonstrated, and wanted us to experience. Put in another way, it's the rule of God in our lives. If God had his best plan for us forever, that's what the kingdom of God would look like. Um, I've heard it described in a slightly different way. Nothing missing, nothing broken. If the kingdom of God is literally in all our lives, in our church, in our family, in our workplaces, nothing missing, nothing broken. It's quite a big thing. So being a member of this church, every church in my book, should not be a passive experience that we just partake of on Sundays. It should be an active experience that we partake of in the whole of our week, literally seven days a week. So try and think of yourselves in this moment now as a secret agent for God outside of our Sunday mornings. Ultimately, with that, I'll come back to this in a minute, but it should leave us with an active expectation that God has a better plan for our colleagues, our neighbours, our family members, literally anyone we would come across on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. If that's the theory, let me just bring it down to the practical. Um, For those of you who weren't here last week, Paul stood up first. Um, I'm just going to give you a little appraisal of what he said. Um, And here's why. If we we look at last week, how, how how Paul's story demonstrates what the kingdom of God looks like to us in Epsom, in Yule, in Leatherhead, in Cheam, in Wallington, um... Wherever you live, this week, next week. Paul talked about, he came to the uh, National Vineyard Leaders Gathering. I'll get that right. He said, I felt really grumpy before I went. His grumpiness was having, uh, amplified by having a deaf right ear, tinnitus in his good ear, and he couldn't uh, move his arm above um, horizontal on his left-hand side. A problem in his shoulder. On the first day of the Vineyard Leaders Gathering, Paul heard the kingdom of God being proclaimed through a teaching that basically said, um, faith is spelt T-R-Y. If you've been around in the vineyard a bit, you might have heard the the teaching before of faith is spelt R-I-S-K. It's a similar basic principle, but faith is spelt T-R-Y. 
Faith is an active doing thing where we get to try things out. Uh, John Wimber, our founder, used to refer to it as doing the stuff. I've read it in the Bible, now I'm just going to do it, doing the stuff. So at the end of that session, he'd heard the kingdom of God proclaimed, and we were all invited to try what ministering in the power of the Holy Spirit might look like. So um, some people stood around Paul uh, and prayed for him, and nothing changed, and prayed for him again, and it maybe got a little bit better. After a third time of praying and commanding the power of the Holy Spirit to heal Paul, his ears got better and his shoulder got better. That's the demonstration. So the kingdom of God and the good news of Jesus was proclaimed, and then the demonstration of that happened shortly afterwards. That is literally the rule and reign of God in Paul's life. It's, you could see it on his face last week. Um, he's full of life again. So he then brings that here. He proclaims the goodness of God to us all. And then we saw that demonstrated almost straight away because the Holy Spirit was on a number of people and we prayed for some of you and we, again, wanted the kingdom demonstrated in your lives right here. Okay, point to ponder two. Who, this is a really quick one, by the way. Who do you know that would benefit from hearing the good news of Jesus alongside seeing the kingdom of God demonstrated in their life. And if, you, if that's too complicated and too theological, can you think of someone today who's suffering or struggling? And literally, I just want you to turn to the person next to you and share that, the name of that person. You don't have to do anything more with it yet. It'll take you like 10 seconds each, tops, if you can think of a name of a person. Can you think of somebody today who's suffering and struggling who would appreciate the demonstration of the kingdom, power of the kingdom of God in their lives? I'll give you like 30 seconds. Talk to the neighbor, person next to you. Cool. That, honestly, that, that, should, that shouldn't have taken long. I hope you could, if you didn't share that, I hope you could think of somebody. If you can remember the name of the person who sat next to you, share that with you. We'll use that again in a moment. So, the apostles taught, they demonstrated, and then something kicked off. If we're doing the same, if we're teaching and demonstrating we should probably expect something to kick off here at Epsom Vineyard. Lorna and I haven't been imprisoned yet, and neither of Paul, for that matter. He's just away for the weekend. <laughs> In case you're wondering. Um, so even though the stories from last Sunday were amazing, since last summer, we have seem to have had an increase in church members who've been in hospital. Some of them are still watching on the live stream now because they're not well enough to be here with us. We said goodbye to Geetha, and we said goodbye to members um, of family members of our church members as well. And there's been a, a larger number, it seems, of personal and health battles that some of our um, church family have had and still going through. This seems to be genuinely what happens when the church family does the things of Jesus and does the things that the apostles did too. There is a plus side to this, or this sermon would literally be about expecting to get imprisoned and whipped, which it isn't. The plus side of this is our confidence, back to that word again, our confidence is built. When our confidence is built, we are more likely to try again. We might, if we've heard a story about healing, we might be tempted when somebody's in, I don't know, um, hobbling into work or something, you go, 
can I pray for your leg? Or you might, be, you might have been that impacted by the stories last week, you start sharing those with people who, who don't come to church. We've got, um, we've got a coronation lunch on the green outside our house this, this afternoon. I know some of my neighbours will ask about church, and I know some of the stories that we heard last week are some of the things I'll probably respond with. They are literally things that are happening right here, right now, in Epsom. When the apostles were whipped, they were happy because God considered them worthy to suffer for the sake of Jesus. Every day they spent time in the temple and in one home after another. They never stopped teaching and telling the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Sometimes we think, if people ask us a question, sometimes we think we've got to give a really good biblical answer or we've got to go into huge amounts of depth. But ultimately, the story that we heard earlier was a really simple one. The apostles had prayed for somebody to be healed, and then they taught about what that was, and those were the stories that they were teaching. Literally, we all have the power to do this. We all have the power to share stories that we've heard or share stories that have literally happened to us um, this week, last week, a few weeks ago. This is a moment to be confident. This is a moment to share those stories and minister the power of the Holy Spirit to each other, but also to be praying fervently and expectantly for God to change the lives of not just us, but our family members, our neighbours, our colleagues. We get to practice the ministry of the Holy Spirit, literally praying for each other and expecting people to be healed or delivered or whatever else comes up. We get to practice that here on a Sunday and we get to practice it in life groups too. If you're not in a life group, please join one. They're a great place to practice the ways of God. Once we've practiced, we get to take it out from here. It's only once we've practiced that we will get the confidence to take this beyond who we are and what we do right here, right now. And when we do, we've, all we've got to do is sneak into that story, it's all the apostles did, about how Jesus, is, Jesus, was, the, the, <laughs> Jesus was murdered, raised back to life to bring us and whoever it is we're speaking to freedom from whatever hurt or pain they're experiencing. I've got a little footnote here. It's what we call in the vineyard the now and the not yet of the kingdom. I promise you, it's another sermon for another day. But essentially, it explains some of the reason why sometimes we pray and it happens, and sometimes we pray and it doesn't happen. The now and the not yet of the kingdom. This feels like a little bit of a now of the kingdom time. You tend to have these seasons where you're going, I'm praying for people and nothing's happening. It's a not yet time. But then you have these other seasons where you're going, the Lord's doing stuff. In this chapter in Acts, the Lord was doing stuff. Based on the stories we heard last week, the Lord was doing stuff. And it impacted those of you who heard it. All of this will inevitably lead to trials and persecutions in some way, shape, or form. But as we pass through those trials and tribulations, persecutions together we'll probably have more opportunities to see the power of God at work in our lives and in the lives of those around us. Literally, as we share our stories as a church family, we will continue to build not only our own confidence, our own faith in the Lord, but we'll build each other's confidence and faith. Okay, the last point to ponder, if you can remember that name. This is the last moment I'm just going to let you turn to the person you were chatting with. Can you pray for the other person you were chatting with and ask the Lord to give them enough confidence to either share Jesus or request healing or whatever it is for that person who might be suffering or struggling? And then swap over and just pray for that last person. 
To be clear, I don't need, I don't, <laughs> I'm, not make, I'm not trying to force you to pray for people you don't want to force, pray for outside of this building. I am asking you nicely to pray for the people inside the building. This is not an opportunity for us to be shameful of not taking those opportunities to try out our faith. Epsom Vineyard is not a place of shame, nor is it a place of name it and claim it, as in, I'll pray for them and that's, I'll believe and, you know, name it and claim it if you've not, yeah. That's, again, that's another sermon for another day. I just want you to leave here this morning having been prayed for by someone in your church family who's asked the Holy Spirit to give you confidence if and when an opportunity to share the love of Jesus and a demonstration of the kingdom comes up. And don't forget Lorna's story last week. She prayed for the waitress in Nottingham and invited her to church. And that waitress bought Lorna chocolates. We always have that internal thing of, I can't do this. It won't work. It definitely won't work, especially with me. But you might get bought chocolates. You just never know. (laughs) You just never know. Um, you've got about, I'm just going to give you about 60 seconds. I want the quickest prayers ever, but pray for, if you can just pray for the person next to you and just ask those two things. I think it's going Enough confidence to share Jesus and request a demonstration of the kingdom. If you've prayed for one person, please swap over now. I'll give you another 30 seconds. Thank you. Um, Would you all mind standing if you're able? We're going to worship next. Um, When we worship, we do a little bit of the proclaiming of the goodness of Jesus. And so we're just going to enter into that now. Band, over to you guys. courage to act on it. If faith can move the mountains, let the mountains move. We come with expectation, waiting here for you. Waiting here for you. You're the Lord of all creation And still you know my heart The author of salvation You've loved us from the start 
waiting here for you with our hands lifted high in praise and it's you we adore singing
no one else will do Cause nothing else could take your place To feel the warmth of your embrace And help me find the way Bring me back to you
Yes, Lord, we just stand in your presence now, Lord. You are everything we want. You're all that we need. In you we have everything. We have our identity, Lord. You are our identity. through us. Thank you that thank you that you're here. Thank you that you're working in us even now. Come home. 
Holy Spirit, increase your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. So I feel like, st stay in that place, stay connected to God. Um, <laughs> I just feel like uh, God wants to do some more healing today. So I've got a couple of things that I feel like God's... Um, so if you've got any thing that you need, sort of physical healing from or emotional healing, the offer is for you to receive prayer. But I've got a couple of specifics. I just got the word cataracts. So if you've got cataracts, I feel like God's power is here and he wants to do something with that. Um, I also had a sense, kind of maybe emotional stuff, when we sang um, to hear you say that I'm your friend. <laughs> then I just wondered if there's somebody here or maybe on the live stream who just found that really kind of hard because they've never heard Jesus you've never heard that Jesus say I'm your friend and so if that's, if that's you Jesus is your friend <laughs> but he wants to speak that to you personally so make sure you get somebody to pray for you for that um, and then I had a sense that there may be somebody here who um, had like an injury maybe a fall and I think it was probably quite a time ago maybe years ago and you hurt the base of your spine um, so two things from that. There might be somebody for who that is still a physical issue. So we'd love to pray for you. Um, and literally, I think this might have been years ago. So don't discount that if you think, oh, that can't be me because that was years ago. That is you. Um, and then the other thing on that, I th this might be a separate person. That When that happened, it was because I think it was at school... And I think somebody pulled the chair away from you. So you may be, you not, may not be feeling any physical pain from that anymore, but I think there's an emotional pain because you, you felt shame in that place because you were laughed at as somebody pulled the chair and you fell. That, yeah, does that, does that make sense? That you, you, you fell and people laughed at you. Um, so if that's you, we would love to pray for you. Um, I've got this sense of... Um excitement in the it, it, the Lord is excited I was excited as soon as Charlie did the notices to be fair and it, notices aren't normally an exciting thing there is a sense there's a sense of the Lord it's been going on for a few weeks probably months the Lord's doing something and we don't we don't know what that is yet but the Lord is doing something um, I've got with the try word that Paul responded to I think a few of you might need to respond to the try word this morning as in I think the Lord might be speaking to you in the same way that he's just spoke to Lorna about something that needs healing or somebody, he wants to share something. And genuinely, safe place. If you would like to share that, let's do that in a minute. I've forced Robin and Penny to try. Any sense of what you think the Lord's doing? I mean, uh, sharing words of knowledge, of healing or something of that nature. You may... If it's some, if, you, if you're sent, you might be stood there going, I think I'm hearing this from God, and it might be for you. If it is, just keep it there, and we'll get someone to pray for you in a minute. If you've got something that you think the Lord has spoken to you about somebody else that's here, let's let's share it. Let's try safe place. Try. Um. Uh, hold, hold that thought. Have you got anything? Your wife has. <laughs> <laughs> you go first, and I'll. I just want to encourage people. Um, so we went to the, the, the vineyard thing last week. Uh, and, and this week we went to the Alpha Leaders Conference. And we talked to a couple of people. And I just really felt, as um, I was talking to this one person in particular, that the Lord was asking her to stop running away. That she was a Christian, but she couldn't settle in one church. You know, she, she kept trying another church and trying another church. And I just really want to encourage everybody here to say, God speaks to all of us. And it's for all of us all the time. And, you know, sort of, it, it's not just special occasions. And even people who you think there's nothing wrong with them, you know, that, that they're here, that, that they're Christians, we all need help. So, you know, I don't want to say 
when Lorna was talking about the chair being pulled away, I just got a really strong sense that there is somebody here with that in particular. Um, so I'd really love to pray for somebody if that re responds to you. Sounds good. Offer you can't refuse, surely. Robin? It's, it's, it's more of a word of knowledge, I think, again. For, during the last song, uh, I really, the words, you know, the, the words of the song, All I Need Is You, um, spoke strongly to me personally, but I, I, th I think there's, there's somebody here who's struggling with material things uh, that's an idol getting in the way between them and God. And God's reminding them that all you need is Him. You don't need the latest car to keep up with your neighbours, the best TV set, because, just because. What you have is what you need, and God wants you to just to remind you of that. Perfect. Thank you. Beth, would you mind? Yes, so I had a picture of a, an old-fashioned um, shepherd's keep built of like a stone dike, a round circle with one exit and entrance. And I just felt God was saying that, um, well, first of all, you restore my soul, that um, there's a safe place in the shepherd's keep where God will restore your soul. And I just feel like some people are spending too much time outside the keep and you need to come into that place of safety and know God restoring your soul. And on the other hand, I feel that some people are afraid to go out. Maybe you've been burnt or hurt through things and you're afraid to go out from the keep and um, that God wants you to have that confidence, that word confidence, to go out and always know that you can come back to the keep later. So um, just that there'll be the right balance, that you won't be afraid of going out if you're staying in a lot, a lot and you won't be afraid to come in if you're out a lot and that you'll always know God restoring your soul in order to give you everything you need um, for him and to be a sheep. Thank you. Um, the wise prophet Yoda once said, <laughs> try, there is no try, only do. If, uh, is that right? <laughs> try, there is no try, only do. do. Um, if you have got anything to share, like we've just had so far, please come and stand next to Penny and Robin. Uh, Mike's next. Um, at a rehearsal earlier this week, I had a picture, and it just seems really appropriate for now. And I had a picture of a packet of jelly. And if you think of the pack of jelly, and there's, I don't know, was there 12 or 16 squares in it? And that's kind of a bit like us. We think we're together. But actually, the jelly needs to be pulled apart and broken up, and then it needs to be mixed down with hot water before it's poured into a mould, and that mould is like God moulding us into this beautiful pudding. Thank you. Um, anyone else want to share anything they feel like the Lord's saying? Charlie. I, I had this verse, which I thought was for the whole church, but I think maybe actually it's just for one person. Um, and it's in he wrote, sorry, it's in Romans 12. And it says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. And I felt like maybe there was somebody here and you've been praying for somebody, maybe it's a family member or a friend, for a long time for healing, either physical or mental, um, and that you haven't seen it. And that was just a word of encouragement for you to be faithful in prayer and that God can still come into that situation. Thank you. We've got lots there. And we've kind of, there was a moment at the end of worship where the, we were just in the presence of God. Um, and I kind of want to take us back to there, but I also want to, uh, to give us an opportunity to respond to any of those words and pictures. So, you guys, if I, anyone who just shared a word, can you go and stand over there? If you would like to respond to any of those words, pictures, whatever it is, can you go and ask the person who delivered it to or anybody else? Any, you can ask anybody else, but I'm just okay. There's, there's, two, there's a reason for this. The, pe the people who just shared, they've tried, they've done, and the people uh, and they would. If you go and say, actually, that's me. I've got a whatever it is, a cataract. 
uh, it, builds, it builds our faith again. It's a, it's a shared community experience. So, um, actually, Mike, do you want to stay there? But anyone else, if, <laughs> uh, um, um, if, you, if you need prayer right now for any of those things or anything else, if you walked in this morning and went, I need prayer for this, come and stand in front of one of these guys. They'll pray for you. Um, and we might need other people to pray. I'm just going to... Actually, I'm going to ask you to stand again, if you don't mind. Just play something. Lord, Lord, as we've come towards the end of our service together, as we come towards the end of our time together this morning, Lord, we want to see the power of your Holy Spirit in, in, in us, in each of us. just ask again as your children will you fill this room again with the power of your presence the the thickness of the presence of God in this space Um, if you would like somebody to pray for you please come to my right your left if not um, the worship band are just going to sing one more song. Please feel free to just free to sing with them. If you've got an orange wristband on, if you can go and pick up the child that you uh, that orange wristband relates to, that'd be great. Um, this is as close to a formal end of our service as we're going to get. So the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, let his face shine upon you and give you his peace. Lord, be gracious to you. Lord's favour rest on you. And the name of the Lord be above your house, your home, your family, all the days of your life. Amen. If you'd like some prayer, come and grab it now. Go.